Hello again and welcome back to the quantum computer series. In this video I want to talk about superposition, entanglement and how these two unique quantum mechanical concepts make qubit fundamentally different from a classical bit. Also if you haven't watched the previous video go ahead and watch that and then come back. As always make sure to subscribe. Alright let's go ahead and talk about superposition principle. Quantum superposition is a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics. It states that every quantum object is in the superposition of all states that can be found in. Let's take a look at an electron as an example. An electron spin, or more precisely its projection along z-axis, can be either up or down. So whenever we measure electron spin, we find electron in either up or down state. So according to the superposition principle, before measurement, electron is in a superposition of up and down states, which is nothing but a linear combination of up and down states. Paul Dirac, de and to describe superposition, famously said, this isn't right, this isn't even wrong. Now, a classical bit, which is the elementary unit of information in a classical computer, can be either 0 or 1. On the other hand, a qubit, which is the elementary unit of information in a quantum computer, is in a superposition of 0 and 1 state at the same time. So that's the fundamental difference between a qubit and a classical bit. The next concept is entanglement, or as Einstein describes, spooky action at a distance. Quantum entanglement is the physical phenomenon that occurs when a group of particles is generated in a way such that the quantum state of each particle of the group cannot be described independently of the state of the others, even when the particles are separated by, by a large distance. Let's take a look at an example. Assume that we prepare two electrons such that the total spin of the system is zero. So the only thing that we know about the system is that the, electron, the electrons must have opposite spin since the total spin of the system is zero. The state of the system can be written as a linear combination of up-down and down-up states, as you can see. Now let's separate the electrons such that they cannot see, feel, or interact with each other at all. If we measure the spin of electron 1, then the spin of electron 2 will be instantaneously determined through the spooky action at a distance. So if the spin of electron 1 is found to be up, then electron 2 state would become instantaneously down and no longer in a superposition of up and down. This is also similar when the first uh, electron spin is down and then the spin of the second electron would be up instantaneously. And as Albert Einstein famously said, the more success the quantum theory has, the sillier it looks. So, uh, superposition together with the entanglement makes quantum computing a much faster and more powerful method than the classical one. N bits, or N classical bits to be more precise, in classical computer can compute to the power N different combinations or states, but one at a time. However, N qubits, thanks to superposition and entanglement, can treat all to the power N states simultaneously, which will solve the problem of exponential growth of calculations which was discussed in the previous video. According to the experts, we, we need only 50 entangled qubits to beat the computing power of the most powerful supercomputers in the world today. However, building a stable and robust quantum computer with 50 entangled qubits is not something straightforward and is still an ongoing project. In the next video, I will briefly talk about the current problems in building quantum computer and how quantum computer simulators are becoming more and more common among computational scientists. Till then, stay tuned.